All right. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, Debian for Shy People, uh, which uh, is going to be a boff led by Ashish Laroya. We're going to, um, Ashish has graciously offered to uh, try to reduce the IO latency by having two mics in circulation. So he's going to run that mic and I'll run this one. Um, so, yeah, welcome. Ashish? Hi, yeah. So, um, wow, so loud. Uh, right, hi. Uh, I wanted to, I organized a boff with the same name last year, and um, I want to sort of just set the tone for a minute or two about what I want us to achieve, and then I want to really have an open discussion. So, to achieve that open discussion, like Dan said, I'll be walking this microphone around and handing it to people rather than standing up here, because that doesn't seem like a boff to me. So, um, yeah, well, I guess I, I began this Debian for Shy People topic about a year ago because I think that a lot of the issues that are addressed by diversity groups are actually just issues of social interaction and ensuring that's of high quality and ensuring that people who aren't sure of themselves or who underappreciate their own skills, that Debian can still get their contributions. And I gave an example of this in my last talk about how there's a person, there are some people on the Debian mentors list who, when they don't get a sponsor for a package, they try emailing the list again, twice, three times. And this is something that some people will do and other people won't. So I want to sort of, uh, Debian deserves to get contributions from both of those people. Uh, and I want to think about actions we can take, maybe structural changes we can make in processes or ways, things we can do on mailing lists that would be different or other kinds of communication media so that um, we are open to people who undervalue their own skills. So um, to that end, there's this Gobby document on the web, which I'll be taking notes, I'll try to take notes on during the talk. It's uh, on the directory devconf11, dc11, hyphen boff, hyphen shy, hyphen people. If you're running the mic, you might not be able to take the notes. Yeah, that, what just, that just struck me. Um, is anyone willing to take notes to that? Okay. Great, thank you. Um, so I guess I want to start by having us. Um, we'll so, I guess I want to start by having us name positive kinds of interactions we've had with people that have helped reassure ourselves. Um, does anyone have any actually nice experiences to share about interacting with Debian people? If you're unsure of yourself. Surely someone has something nice to say. I can go first. Um, the, as I've been working on Dev Expo and I've been putting a lot of energy into it, it's been really great to get thank yous in person from people like Pabs and online from people like Christoph Haas who maintains mentors.debian.net. You're pointing at this like a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Does, does anything, at moments where you're unsure of yourself, has anything nice happened to you when you've been working on things in Debian? Is that, is that a clear enough question? Do you want to try rephrasing it, Daniel? Uh, well, I can, um, um, I can just speak for myself in terms of some things where um, when the Debian maintainer process was put into place. Um, I mentioned to a couple of people that it was something that I had considered when I heard that it was starting up, and I got feedback from them. Uh, that I, it was something that I had considered, but that I wasn't sure I was ready to go ahead and do that. And I got feedback from them that was very immediate, saying, no, this is, you're in exactly the position that this was intended to cover. You should do it. There's no reason you shouldn't do it right now, and we can just be done with it. Um, so just asking some and the, the process was basically me asking someone or mentioning it the po as a possibility and then getting an Im immediate feedback from them that it was a, that it was a good thing. It was, it was nice. Any other good stories? My uh, presentation, please, first. Well, I'm Victor. I, I'm not actively contributing to Debian. But in fact, I worked with Gunnar Wolf 
and was uh, a change because I was uh, working with Red Hat. And in, I, one time he suggested suggest me to use Debian. And I say, well, teach me how. To. And the first thing that he told me, try and do and that. And, and, ah, I need to learn again all over the things. And it's really different than the other thing. And it was like, why? You are sitting in, with me here and go, we don't, we are, don't, don't help me. And I think most of the list at one time was like this. Like if you ask for something that was uh, obvious for other people, uh, you get uh, go and read the manual and install that and try this and read that, and then maybe you don't need to ask this. Uh, it was very good. <laughs> In fact, I ended using Debian, and, and I'm. Read the manual? No, I, I, it was a very good team at, at, uh, at the end that uh, Gunnar don't have to teach me how to install uh, at that time uh, Debian because I understand a, a lot of things uh, in the process. But in, in the moment it was uh, like annoying because I was sitting right here and, and, his was, and he was here and hey, <laughs> what, what now? Could you at least ask him for help when you were stuck? Or did he just say, no, read the manual all the time? Uh, well, he was busy <laughs> reading something for other thing. And go uh, uh, oh, uh, and read this or search, <laughs> search the web. <laughs> that kind of things. Yeah. Useful pointers, perhaps, yeah. Well, then we can switch to, to negative experiences. <laughs> um, I mean, I think, I think what I want to do is talk for a while about those and get a sense of what the social, cultural, personal, personality irritating problems are in Debian. Then maybe we can spend some of the time at the end, if we don't fill it all with negative experiences, we can spend some of the time at the end thinking about ways to actually improve those. So. Um, has anyone had, it, had, an, had a moment where you've, been, you've not been sure that the work you've been doing for Debian was good and you feel like the community disappointed you? Can you hold it? Which part? Just part. Well, I guess both. Part. <laughs> good point. Uh, well, my experience has been in general very positive and uh, there have been only a few cases of uh, like I, I, I've been wondering if I have really been I've made somebody really upset or something, but I think the general problem is that you need to know who to talk to, and sometimes you send email and you get no reply, and that's very unsure for a new new user. So I don't know how to fix it, but that I think is a major issue. I can add another negative experience, which was when I, when I actually applied for DD. Um, I, was, um, I was initially deferred because I was asked, can you please, can you, can you give a list of everything you've done for Debian? And if not, then maybe you haven't contributed enough. And I felt put, put off by that because I don't actually like to, I don't want to make a list that feels like I'm bragging. And it just seemed kind of like, I, well, if, I, if that's what I have to do, then I'm not going to do it. And I was actually deferred for many years as a result in the DD process, in the NM process. Interesting. I mean, I think one of the most discouraging things we do is on the Debian mentors list, having people wait a lot. Uh, and like you said, receiving no answers to your mails. Anyone else have any negative experiences they can share of when Debian, you weren't sure of yourself and then Debian failed to help bring you up? It's not a personal experience, but uh, sometimes you, you see ITP, of probably of new contributors. Uh, so 
they are willing to help us uh, provide a new software. And j someone just replies, uh, oh, why the crap do you package this PHP application yeah. which is not really needed? <laughs> so this is probably not a good way to start uh, either in Debian. <laughs> Well, um, when I started making depth text, like, I don't know, 2003 or something, um, I was just alone and I was just building this thing. And uh, it took like five years before people kind of realized it wasn't such a bad idea. <laughs> and uh, I count myself lucky I'm a slightly stubborn person when I think something works <laughs> because if I had waited for somebody to say, well, yeah, that's a really cool idea. Um, there be no depth tags, uh, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I need to, I didn't understand it at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm just saying that I'm, I'm just saying that it took something like I don't know five years or something for depth tags to get officially kind of recognized as something useful and mm -hmm. depth tags. Depth tags. Um, and luckily I'm a stubborn person or I would have given up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Anyone else have any negative experiences to report, or negative things you've seen that you think are discouraging new contributors? BKG, behind you. I can relay a comment from IRC. Lucius 2011 says that this ask.debian.net was a huge uh, success and maybe something in that uh, Regard could be made for contributors as well, not only users. Not to derail entirely, but so do you all know what ask.debian.net is? Uh, have you all? So ask.debian.net is a question and answer forum that uh, I guess. Well, it's modeled after the website Stack Overflow indirectly. If you've seen Stack Overflow, it should look similar. Um, in terms of, I guess I could probably tell this to the IRC person on IRC, but um, the ask.debian.net site, could we just pile onto it and tell new contributors to ask questions there also? Is anyone here of the DDs and contributors, mentors, whoever, uh, do they use it? Like, do you do you have? Are you listening to the text? <laughs> but I would subscribe to some as an RSS feed, if maybe. <laughs> if maybe. <laughs> How long has it been going? <coughs> How long has it been going? Uh, I think about a year. Does anyone know better than that? Maybe eight months. Well, so maybe we can, maybe to respond directly to what you said about the NM process, do you think that it would be an improvement? Um, is there something that, they, that NM could have asked you that would have generated the same response that they needed that would have encouraged you to actually apply at that point? Uh, I'm not, I mean, I think that the NM process has actually changed dramatically since I was initially deferred. So I think that most of that has been fixed um, in that, I don't know if there was, dis there were discussions earlier today about um, things like DD portfolio and uh, mind change logs and where it actually is easier for an application maintainer to retrieve that information without requiring every, um, every NM, every applicant to go through and list up all of their contributions, um, which I, th I think would be good. I think that part might be solved by now. Thank you to the folks <laughs> who have worked on solving it. I know Enrico is one of them. And one remark about the 
the terrible thread on Naveen Devel, I think it was, about the PHP web app that was apparently reasonably high quality, but a few people didn't know that, so they pretended it wasn't. Uh, the so there were two problems with that thread, as I recall. One was that there was the implication, there was the sort of assumption of knowledge by the people who were like, oh man, another PHP web app, it probably sucks. But the other problem is that then they implied that through that, through that communication, they implied that that person's work wasn't valuable. And um, so I wonder if, one thing that I've read is that if, uh, if, you're in a sort of, if you're in a public conversation forum and one person says something that's offensive or hurtful to somebody else, it's really valuable for a third person to step up and say to person A that that was a hurtful thing to say. Do people feel that way here? Would it have improved the thread if uh, we asked people to reply maybe privately to the original poster or maybe to all the Debbie Novell saying your tone is unacceptable or Yes, clearly yes. I mean, it's something that is going on for a few years now, uh, and I think we, we we're seeing the result. Uh, I mean, Deben Devil is much more. Uh, I don't know how to say. Uh, well, it's less aggressive than it used to be, at least uh, uh, in my opinion. So, uh, and I guess it's because there are several people, uh, me included, who reply from time to time to say, "Well, that's not a reasonable thing to say, and please think twice before writing." And you always have people who, uh, who won't listen, but if you get three or four similar answers, maybe you, you think twice, really. One thing I want to emphasize is that even if you, if you just join Debbie and Devel and watch for lousy threads where people are mean to each other, and you reply, you're making a really val and you reply saying, you're being mean, stop it, or something more concrete, like, um, you should make sure you've reviewed the package before you try to provide feedback like this. And secondarily, the tone you're using is hostile to new contributors. Um, if people want to join Debian Devel and assign themselves the task of doing that and sort of being the nice, pe the nice person police, that would probably be extremely valuable, I think, to the project. Even if you don't feel like contributing to, to the technical side of that. Um, there's this talk from, um, I, I don't remember the names, I think Fitzgerald something and Sussman. Uh, it's called Poisonous People in Open Source, uh, which is a very uh, catchy name for basically being nice to other people. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's one of those things, like uh, when you have this nice community uh, and everybody's nice, to each other, and then there's someone screaming and being mean. It really sticks out like a sore thumb. So yeah, like when you when, when you can tone it down generally by reminding people to be nice to each other, um, it with time it just fixes itself because it really sticks out. Well, I think that part of the point of the talk was that if you don't cut off those poisonous people then they take over the project, or they ruin it for everybody else. So yeah, you can address it that way. I, I just wanted to comment on that. Uh, one of my concerns about this kind of labeling is that it labels a person as sort of irredeemably poisonous. And one of the be some of the best messages that I've actually read in a nasty discussion are apologies from people who have realized that they've crossed a line. Um, maybe they make an excuse, maybe they don't make an excuse, and they just apologize. But I think that itself can set a tone and a bar, uh, an expectation um, and you know maybe maybe folks here have crossed over a line or said something they didn't mean to say, um, and an apology can set a tone far better than a than a you know you shouldn't do that email because it's somebody saying oh right there are community standards here to respect so um, I don't know. Perhaps the reason nobody's talking is because of the selection bias of the people attending. <laughs> Not too busy typing. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least uh, on, on behalf of part of the people that are not typing, 
maybe it's also because we want to, I want to understand the, the other side. Uh, yeah, the thing is, I, when I started being a DD, I tried to be close to people who tried to approach, but then uh, I don't have time, I have other things, and uh, I have not been very supportive of newcomers. So, I mean, I, I want to, to know what, what, what's the mood uh, in that area. You said you want to know what the mood is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I've thought about doing is running an, running an event for projects to sign up where, running an event for individuals to sign up to maybe for a week, hang out on an open source project's mailing list. And every time they see something that they think will turn off, oh, something turned off indeed. Um, anyway, any time the, so you make a sort of team of roving nice people, where your job as a nice person for a week is to go to a project chosen by you, hang out on their mailing list for a week, and any time you see something that you think is hostile or will turn people off, or that people who are unsure of themselves, it'll make them extra unsure of themselves, you reply. And then after a week, your job is done, and you can go back to your normal life. Is this the kind of thing that people would be interested in rotating position inside Debian for? Would anybody sign up for that? Um, just a question, slightly devil advocate here. How do you uh, filter out energy sinks? How do you do what? How do you filter out energy sinks? Uh, en tell me more about the kind of energy sink you mean. Um, like, uh, I mean, sometimes you have pe per people who are positively shy. Sometimes you have people who feign shyness because they're attention seeking. And uh, those can be severe energy sinks because the more you try and help, the more they ask for help. Um, and um, so um, I, I've tried to be nice generally for my Debian career, and, and you reach a point where you become a, a target for energy sinks, and you sort of uh, need to um, find ways to say no, but if you start being helpful at the beginning, it becomes harder to say no. Um, that is at the moment uh, one of the biggest conundrums I find in the trying to be nice and helpful sort of thing. I kind of hit that wall and I'm puzzled. I mean, I can provide part of an answer, but I hope other people can provide other parts of an answer. Um, I would say that in one, one reason I, I'm, I'm theoretically structuring this roaming nice person task uh, to be limited in time is that at least then you know that they could, people who are going to be energy sinks can only suck your energy for a week. And similarly, um, really hypothetically, we could have forced vacations for DDs, during which time, like one or two months a year, you can't do any uploading. Um, you're not responsible for anything. You don't have to reply to any emails on Debian Devel. And you make sure that before the vacation, somebody else knows enough about your packages that things are not going to break. And the other thing is that if you set one difficult thing is to, well, if you can set a policy for what kinds of emails you are and aren't going to answer, or at least what kinds of answers you're going to send, and you make that policy really clear, that can help. Like Pabs saw, wrote on the Debian Mentors thread that I was reading to refresh from my talk before about how he doesn't, at least at that point, upload, he doesn't sponsor packages, he only reviews them. Uh, because he doesn't want to create the burden for Debian of maybe leaf packages that stick around. If you you could possibly find there's some rule you can set for yourself similarly. But is there? Is that useful? What do you think? Oh, that, that's, it's, it's fine in a context of the, the, the thing you'd like to set up, but I, I'm, I, at the moment I fail to see ways to apply that in, in everyday life. I, I can't tell people, I'll be nice to you for a week and then I'll tell you to sort off. Or I can't be nice to somebody for a week and then stop replying to a private email if they contact me in private because I have been nice to them. Mm -hmm. And so they will you know, contact me in private and say, well, you've been nice to me. Uh, well, yeah, it, it will stay a conundrum for me, I guess, for a while. Uh, I uh, try to make the definite policy not to answer uh, private emails uh, to me 
which are related to a certain topic, like, I don't know, HTTPD or traffic server or something. And so when uh, someone mails to me in private, I just reply, please uh, uh, take this on the list. So that sort of stuff that, uh, uh, because I don't, know, I, I don't know everything and I'm not there always, so that kind of explanation how, uh, helps you get out of that corner, I think. Oh, hi, sorry. Uh, I, I would like to reply to Enrico because uh, I've seen this problem many times in IRC channels. Don't you think there's a certain time or when you come to realize that whether the person is actually doing some work or he's just bothering you with all the questions? Because I personally feel that if a person is trying and he's asking you questions, uh, you have some instinct which tells you that he actually tried to do something. So don't you think that? Because... Should I take the mic to say I didn't understand what you say? I feel really uh, bad. I'm that. saying that you talked about uh, being over nice for a long period of time that, and that, that it gets boring. So don't you think you come to realize after some, some amount of time that whether the person is actually doing something or he's just, you know, crawling? Don't you? Oh, yes. I, yeah. I can realize that. That's yeah. fine. But uh, once you realize that, um, once you realize that your efforts, instead of having been efforts to help somebody, you've been feeding the energy beast, um, it's much more difficult to disengage from the energy beast because they can go to other people and say, look, that person helped me and now they hate me. And then you, you need to handle all the other people that say, what did that person do to make you hate? that person and so on and so forth and and you create the monster while trying to be nice okay another thing which helps in this case is uh to have a support back channel so uh, uh like we have a httpd channel and then we have apache support where the uh main crew uh doing rc support hangs out and uh, which is which is very healthy because then you don't let the anger out in the main channel on uh, on people you're trying to help. Uh, <laughs> so, so you have a channel where you can scream and uh, communicate between in each other and say, "Okay, that's that's a troll. I kicked him or whatever." Um, right. I don't know. I've I've never kicked anybody. I'm, I've up for a couple of years now and I've never kicked anyone. I managed to come by quite fine. But yeah, have, have a back channel. Absolutely. It should be mandatory in Debian to have a, 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 a ranting cabal uh, to vent out frustration instead of Debian lists, like with a, with a small number of friends, and even better to have a hugging cabal. <laughs> uh, because when you, when you have a channel where everybody runs, you kind of just feed each other's frustration. Uh, whereas if you have a channel when you say like, oh dear, I had such a difficult day, look at that, it's awful, and somebody replies like, hugs, that kind of, you know, improves your life a little bit. And yeah, thoroughly suggested, uh, small cabals of huggers are the way to go. No, I, no. I, I think there's a Debian hugs IRC channel. <laughs> Wait, is there really? I think so. If not, there should be. Can someone just join IRC and see if Debian hugs is... If, well, anyway, I mean, Debian Couch at one point in time. That was the psychiatrist channel. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, let's keep that going. That's a good idea. Well, I know about Debian Say Hi, which is a different story. And that's the, the, some of you might not know that the Debian QA group a year and a half ago or so, well, team, whatever, efforts, not a group, it's everyone. Um, <laughs> it's really confusing to say anything about Debian QA X. Anyway, the Debian QA effort has a Debian hyphen QA IRC channel, and people used to join it and try to say hello to each other and also do QA work sometimes. And some part of the IRC channel said, stop wasting our scroll back saying hello, hello, hold this, hello, hello. <laughs> so uh, the people who liked saying hello made the Debian say hi IRC channel. And there they say hello, and also they do, they do QA work. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm a big fan. Uh, it should be make like the Debian private hugs email list where <laughs> everything you email here must always stay, stay, private, stay private and also 
you must you're expected probably to reply saying hug. I already got three hugs. Oh. Just now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe Debian hugs is the answer to all of our cultural problems. We can all go home. I wish I could capture that. No, you don't want to. <laughs> Does anyone need the. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm going to go join the IRC channel. Um, but uh, uh, that was a really, like, even if it sounds silly, it's a really good idea. Are there other, other like, culture changes that could improve the situation? One thing we've talked about in the past is, one thing that lots of projects have talked about on and off is altering the way mailing lists work so that you can slow down flame wars. I don't know. Uh, that's all, uh, there's a whole topic. I'm not going to say anything. Go ahead. So one thing, I've, one thing I've noticed about my participation in DevConf is I tend to hang around the same people and talk to the same people and stuff like that. So next year, I think I plan to not talk to anyone that I've already met before and say hi to new people. I encourage anyone else who wants to do that to do so. Last year, this this buff was not on video. Was better? I was better the participation. You were in, in that. Oh, wait. What's the question? I don't understand. Uh, the last year yes. was a buff with the same name, but was not in, in video. Was in the oh. in the well, not was not taped. Right, it was, only, it was not taped just because the video team didn't have access yeah, to that room. Yeah, but I remember that when, I, I, lost, I also don't, don't attend that, but I remember louds and a lot of people the making noise, and <laughs> here it's very quietly, and I think maybe the cameras and, and the thing is not helping. Well, I think we also didn't have the microphones to worry about. Yeah, I guess in a way the cameras are hurting because you have to move the microphone around. Uh, I think last year I also presented more wacky ideas, of which I could dig up that list of wacky ideas again. Um, but I, I, well, what? Okay. Um, I definitely have the feeling that cameras and microphones don't help shy people speak up. So really would suggest not doing that. Good idea. I mean, if we want, we could just kill the video and then we could all just yell at each other. <laughs> and then have a great time. <laughs> That'd be fine with me. And not <laughs> okay. One, one thing that I, on, on the topic he perhaps said, like about how you interact with people you've never met before, um, I, was, I was missing something like an introduction round, but how you do that with 300 people. Um, I was wondering if we could set up some kind of, I don't know, uh, speed dating like mechanism. So, I mean, you make two lines and you have one minute uh, per person to actually, uh, you know, just say, hey, I'm Luna and I'm doing this and this and this in Debian and the other person like, can do that. And you say, oh, great, I've used this package. Or, wow, it's so cool that you're getting into Debian. And, and so you can figure it out later for the conference because there's a lot of faces that I've well, I'm, I have to look, you know, for the name tag and say, hmm, she, yeah, this person looks scary. I'm not going to. Well. That line of people uh, introducing themselves to each other <laughs> <laughs> is called the key signing. So, 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 so at, this year's, at this year's key signing party, we didn't do a monstrously long line. We actually divided into 10 groups of 10 to 12 people each, and people were expected within their group to introduce each other, um, talk about who they were, and it's not more than you know one or two minutes per person, but it wasn't. It was intended to be more of a social um, opportunity than just here's my ID, here's my fingerprint, you know, sign my key. Did so, they do that? Some people did. Yeah. Enrico didn't understand.
That could have been because everyone was talking when I was trying to explain what I was hoping would happen. <laughs> so we could turn off the cameras and continue this conversation. <laughs> so I believe it's uh, about self-confidence. And actually, uh, many people who are trying to, to work on Debian uh, doesn't know their own skills. So when they speak with some DD, uh, they don't exactly know what they actually know. So they see them as some weirdos and think that they cannot help at anything. Uh, so that's why probably they are a little bit shy. So should we actually turn off the cameras? Is there a consensus on that? Does anyone want think we should keep the camera on? Maybe it's a different question. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe, maybe I should have thought about what I was going to say in a second, a little longer, but I didn't have time. He was so fast. Um, I, and, and allow me you know, a second. Maybe I, I have the feeling that we're trying very hard to switch or, or consider what we could be doing to accommodate better you know, shy people or people who don't like asking questions or all, this, all kinds of different people. Um, and I wonder whether there is something that we can do in a different level this is, that is not how the project can change to accommodate these people, but what we could do as a project to help these people. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't want to say shyness is wrong in any way. Um, I'm sure that shy people probably would like to overcome or be able to overcome selectively their shyness in certain um, environments where they feel comfortable. So maybe we can find ways in which we can help them to overcome this shyness. Of course, on the one hand, by making the environment such that they feel comfortable, but maybe on the other hand, by passing on some sort of skill, some ideas, or, or just, or maybe, maybe creating a motivation for them to just try it. Like, for instance, saying on every Saturday from now on at noon for one hour, um, the good questions are the stupid ones and get laughed at, and only the stupid questions are the good ones, or some, I don't, you know, something to get people to, to just dip their feet into the water and find out that they don't get their head bitten off. Um, I've got an idea. <laughs> That, that, that is a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> I know, <laughs> but it worked. You said something. <laughs> yes, but was it helpful? I don't know. You're, uh, you're on tape now and on air. Did it oh, great. You? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. Okay. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go on air? <laughs> uh, a, a really simple question. Um, you want to dedicate an hour, an hour a week for that. Um, well, you should consider time zones, of course. And what's wrong with asking those questions on the main channel? I mean, you expect to, to get the resources for answering that uh, from people on the main channel. One thing to consider is to create a dedicated channel for that, but of course, then no one will be on the dedicated channel. So uh, why uh, Debian Mentors was originally created for, to, to distract people from Debian Devel. Uh, so um, why would you expect to get, uh, how, how would you expect to get uh, 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 new uh, ans uh, questions answered? On the, on the channel? That's a, that's a very good question, I think, uh, and it shows that I really didn't have enough time to prepare what I was going to say. Um, we did talk about this over lunch a little bit, and uh, I have this feeling that 
we've heard the sentence, you know, no question is a stupid question. Only the unasked questions are stupid questions. How many times have you heard that? Does it apply to pretty much every forum that you know of? Because there, no forum nowadays could potentially or possibly even say that, no, we actually think that some questions are stupid. Every forum out there says only the unasked questions are the stupid questions. And what's the result? The result is that people don't, it becomes so inflated, so mainstream, that people don't consider that anymore. And it, if we had the, you know, one hour on the Saturday afternoon, considering time zones and everything, yeah, yeah, I know it gets a little bit more complicated than this, but I'm just running some abstract ideas. If we, if we make an event out of this, you know, like Debian balloon party, where you, like, can't do anything wrong, and the stupider you get, the better it is. <laughs> okay, that's Debian Devel, actually. But uh, um, <laughs> if we had something like this and actually made it a specific event that, that started and ended in very constrained periods of time, maybe that would be an additional reminder for people. Maybe that would be an additional motivation. Um, history has a name for it, and it's called Carnival. <laughs> and Carnival. pretty much... Any society has a carnival situation in which rules are broken. Uh, <laughs> we tend to have the 1st of April, or Debian Curiosa for it, um, but it's not just quite what you're talking about. It's just a data point and along those not, lines. Not rules. The only thing that uh, worries me about uh, uh, your, uh, well, Martin's uh, proposal and wording is that I don't think anybody wants to say okay, it's time for the stupid questions, now I'm going to ask. And if nobody laughs at my questions, is that they're really stupid, so I should stop asking forever. <laughs> so, well, I mean, that idea may be a good idea, but uh, with a better wording. It's an idea, so elaborate on it. I'm not, I, I see your point entirely, and, it, and yeah, no, we don't want to say like, you know, th this is the time when the stupid people can speak up and at other times <laughs> shut up. No, we obviously we don't want to create this sort of um, environment. What I would like to create is an environment, an explicit, even more explicit environment than saying it over and over again, that this is the time when you can't do any mistake, when you, when you will not be judged for something that you might um, do and later regret. This is the time that we dedicate for you to gain experience without having to fear that there will be negative consequences because everybody involved in the experiment gives you this credit and knows that this is for the specific purpose to help people find out that no one, as a matter of fact, I will not get killed or laughed at because everybody here has made mistakes and survived. Okay. Uh, another, okay, another stupid question for this forum. Um, are the people who uh, are those people who will ask the questions the shy people or those who will not read the manual? Well, uh, how, how wanna, many of those? I want to trade. Well, let me put that on cue. And let me trade microphones. Whoa. Okay. Um, I just want to respond to a couple of things that have been said. One is that I even I, I sort of misnamed this buff. Um, so. I guess I think that it's not so much about shy people so much as for all of us in our moment of insecurity. It's not about the person, the person or a label. Um, and the other is that there's what you're talking about with these events that you run periodically where you say you can ask stupid questions now. Um, I've been running a couple of things like that on IRC for other projects. They're called, we call them build it events. And it's just where if you want to become a new contributor but you don't know how, then if, you have, if you're having trouble even just getting your build environment working, show up to IRC at this particular time. And then Debian Women ran a similar one of those for Debian, and there were like 25 people or so who showed up. I just wanted to quickly re respond to that because it just popped up in my head at LCA, which is another conference, a very good conference. Um, they have a... I think it's like newbie orientation walk or something like that. And that's before the actual conference starts. It is five, like one hour or something like that, especially for the people who have never been there, to meet and find out from the regulars what happens at this conference. And maybe something like this, you know, maybe an orientation hour weekly where you can ask anything, something. Less direct. LCA has a 
more than just the newbie orientation session, which is in the afternoon of the day before uh, LCA. LCA also has a, a program specifically for partners of attendees, and it has a document that's maintained um, explaining about LCA to people who've never been there before as well. So it's it's trying quite hard to be friendly to um, people around the community. I think we're about out of time. So, Okay, well, thanks. Uh, I hope you all keep talking about like cultural, personal issues outside of this room, and maybe without a camera. Cheers. <laughs>